Welcome back to International 3D Printer, I'm Lee. Uh, today we're gonna do a quick 3D bench update, basically just some things that I've printed recently and some old prints as well, what I intend to do with them and hopefully some future projects as well to, to bring to the channel. Things like this little PUBG helmet here, oversized, really good, nice little project. Um, great little uh, print as well. Uh, so I think uh, without further ado, let's go and have a look see what's on the bench. Okay, so what's on my 3D bench? My 3D bench uh, update is gonna be basically what I've got uh, printed already um, and what I plan to do with them over the coming couple of months. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna go with the first thing that I ever printed, which is this. This is a T800 Terminator uh, head uh, and I've printed this on my Ultimaker 2 Plus, which I bought about four years ago now. And um, this was my first ever print. Not gonna paint it, not gonna do anything with it, but absolutely love it. And let me zoom you in a little bit more, look. So you can get a good look at it. But this comes with um, zero, you don't have to use any supports or anything like that. It's printed at 1.5 with Ultimaker's own silver. Um, and you come in, it, there is some supports that, that, that get printed there that you just cut out. But apart from that, that's fantastic. I just wanted to show that off because that's one of the prints that I'll always keep. I did do recently a comparison print between my Ultimaker 2 Plus and my Prusa uh, Mark 3S. This one's done on a Prusa Mark 3S, came out absolutely fantastic, 1.5 uh, in the uh, old Prusa Silver. And uh, it's come out really well. I did a side-by-side -side comparison with uh, the one from um, uh, the Ultimaker as well. Uh, the Ultimaker one, I did one as well, but I gave that to a friend. He wanted it, he saw it, he said I had to have it, so I gave it to him. Uh, but I plan to do one of these on the on the resin printer as well, which will be fantastic. Uh, it'll even be more de much more details and a lot easier to paint as well. But this one I am going to paint up. Uh, but a great little start that was, really enjoyed that. If you haven't got this uh, model, all the links to all the uh, STLs that I show on the on the video will be found underneath uh, in the comments below. Um, but yes, fantastic, came out really well. Really chuffed with the Prusa on that one. I didn't think it would handle that really well. But what I have found is the Prusa handles support uh, overhangs much better than the Ultimaker. The Ultimaker, for some unknown reason, doesn't handle overhangs very well, which is a bit of a shame. But the good thing about the Ultimaker is it's the, bottom, the the first layer like glass, where it's on that glass sheet, it actually looks like glass, really nice indeed. Uh, so that uh, that T800 head is gonna be something I'm gonna do very soon. I uh, also did this recently, uh, which is a Pikachu for my friend. He loves, he loves, um, uh, he loves uh, um, bloody Pikachu and all that jazz. And <laughs> he watches the cartoons and everything. He's got the game on it, uh, on it, his app on his phone and everything. Uh, all I've got to do is finish the mouth, the eyes, and the nose, and then she's done. A little bit of touch up here and there. But this is quite heavy. Uh, I printed this ages ago on the Ultimaker, um, and I put uh, about 20% infill in there, so she's really heavy. But uh, really great. Um, uh, you know, it's just something that's a little bit of fun for him that he can have on his shelf. Uh, going on to this, uh, the Wayland Utani uh, symbol from Aliens, which I think you'll probably recognise. Uh, on Ultimate Modern Products, uh, we do uh, we sell a, a 172 APC uh, from Aliens, the the, uh, the APC that they all arrive in, which will sit on there really really nice, which is why I've done it. I've just got to paint that white, and those are very slight yellow, I think, and that is done and ready for for a, a nice little background, I think, for the APC. Uh, that's done quite a while ago as well. Uh, we've got this, uh, which I absolutely love. Uh, this is a Nuka Cola bottle from Fallout with a cap that fits really snug, as you can see. And uh, this I'm gonna, again, gonna paint up for a friend. This was done on the Automaker quite a while ago. Uh, got the supports there. Uh, I don't know if it really needed supports, but I wanted to do them just to get the, the base proper because you can actually, and I've tested it, you can actually put liquid in there and it holds it. So, uh, but uh, I'm not gonna do that for him. I don't think he'll wanna drink it after it's been in there. But that's, that came out, That was a 1.5 on the Ultimaker 2 Plus, and again, came out really, really nice. Not gonna be a lot of sanding work needed doing to that at all, very light sanding. And that'll, uh, that'll make a nice gift for his birthday next year. Uh, we've also got this Batman. Now this Batman I did ages ago on the Ultimaker, 
Again, at 1.5, came out absolutely beautiful, really nice. It's not gonna need any uh, post work at all. I've done a little bit on the nose because there was an overhang there. But apart from that, that came out fantastic. And that will go straight, I'll have paint straight down on that. Um, and obviously, ideally for that, we use uh, Ultimate Modern Products uh, primers. Uh, these are South Leveling uh, Micro Filling Primers. And they come in several colors. They've got a black, a gloss black, a gray, and a white. Um, but I tend to do all the 3D models in the black or the gloss black. Um, but this stuff is fantastic. Uh, if you've got a good finish like this, even after you've sanded, this is fantastic. It's really good. It's self-leveling, which is the best thing you can have for 3D models because uh, it actually levels into the striations and uh, that's what, where it comes, whether it's micro filler uh, properties come from, from the, from the self-leveling part. Uh, so that'll be that. I'll do several different colors of black on that and that'll look really nice too. Um, we've got uh, this oversized... PUBG helmet, uh, which comes uh, across like this. I won't be able to give you the STL for this because it's a very nice Chinese guy that I met online and uh, he's he's done all these modeling. Um, this is his logo, so if you come across that logo, this is the guy. I cannot pronounce his name, I don't want to ruin his name for him. Uh, but I said to him, look, would you kindly send over these STLs? And he did, um, fantastic. I'll just have to cut the visor out on this. Uh, if you like PUBG on the Xbox, PlayStation or uh, PC, then, um, uh, this is definitely one for you, but this was done on the Prusa at 1.5, really nice indeed, until you get to the top there, as you can see. Uh, but that'll just be a sand and then a fill with the, the ultimate, uh, ultimate black gloss. And uh, this goes together really well, as you can see, quite simply, that slots in there like that and it's done. Uh, great little model, oversized it, uh, looks really good. I'm gonna make, put it on a post, make a post for it, stick it on the post, make a great ornament, I think. Uh, I also did, well, that's if it doesn't break, of course. Uh, I also did a, um, uh, a smaller version, uh, which is this, you can see here, which I have painted already. Um, now, this was done quickly at 0.2, and it's come out okay. Uh, had a little bit of sanding on the top, uh, but apart from that, looks really good. Um, the bigger ones come out much better, I think, uh, but then I'm gonna paint this up. Um, it's just gotta do some weathering, um, a lot of dry brushing on that, really, not, not a lot to write home about. Uh, get a bit of foil uh, to put, put in there, stick in there for the visor, which I can cut out, a little acetate, coloured acetate or something like that. And that will look really nice indeed, and that will come up well. So uh, that's, uh, that's again, you can see a thing here, most of these go to my friends. Um, one project that I am working on very, very soon uh, for you guys is this. Uh, this is Kay's Blaster from the new 2049 Blade Runner. Uh, Blade Runner, the original Blade Runner is my favorite film of all time. Um, and as you can see, uh, this was done on the Ultimaker 1.5. Absolutely beautiful print, come out really well. You see the quality uh, all around, pin sharp. Um, and uh, for prototyping or anything like this, I always go, my Ultimaker is the go-to. I mean, this is what the machine's for. When I want to do really fine stuff. Um, because it's it's not quite a core XY, but it's um, it doesn't have a moving bed. It's a raised bed. It's all, still a Cartesian printer. Um, it's not a core XY, but it's very close to a core XY. And this, once it's uh, fitted together, let's just pop all this together so you can see. Uh, goes together very easily, um, and obviously being printed on the Ultimaker as well. All the connecting parts here are very smooth, very smooth indeed. So I don't have to worry about it fitting at all. And it goes in like so. And then we move that up. And there you go. That's Kay's Blaster from the new 2049. Um, very nice indeed. Uh, you can see that I had problems uh, doing the finger guard. Uh, but I've uh, managed to sort that out on the second run. The one problem I did have consistent, consistently with it is uh, this. Uh, finger the trigger here um, could not whatever orientation it's printed in that orientation so it's like that um, and it just the don't know why but the ultimate just kept knocking uh, the uh, the uh, support material out and everything um, and it just I did it three times and just can get the print so what I've done sliced just the trigger so I'll cut that out and pop the trigger on there like so and it'll be as good as new you won't even know uh, but that is a project that I'm going to do for a video um, 
uh, very soon, probably, hopefully, probably within the next two to three weeks, I'm going to do a video of this uh, being uh, put together, uh, filled, painted, and then weathered uh, to make it look like a real model. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. I've been dying, I've, this has been printed for about six months now. And it's one of those things that I wanted to get around to doing it, but just haven't got around to doing it. Um, one other thing that uh, uh, on the on the resin on the uh, my FDM printers is this that I printed. Now for for Christmas I wanted to um, I don't know if you know but uh, I co-own Ultimate Modeling Products with a with a friend and I wanted to do him a Christmas present. So I thought what I do is a light box with our company logo, and this is printed in uh, Prusa Galaxy Black. And which is a, a beautiful, one of my favourite filaments ever. Uh, prints beautifully, uh, hides any striations whatsoever, and it's got this little silver fleck in there. And where the silver is very, very small, it's not like some of these uh, filaments where they have these silvery parts, they're too big. It's absolutely beautiful, and it really does, it hides so much as well. Uh, this was Filamentive Natural, another company that I use a lot of, um, and I did, uh, I think it's 02 mil of that and then a black cover over the top and it sits in there like this, a light box and the light box will put a, an entrance thing for the cable and then in the corners here you can see that I've just um, left a really thin bit of plastic for screws if someone wants to mount it. But what happens is um, we pop this uh, uh, a light LED light, uh, I think this should work on my little uh, extension cable here, let's just have a quick look. There you go, like so. And we pop the cover on. I'll pop the light off for you just so you can see it a bit better. And there you go. Okay, that looks fantastic. And he's got that up in his shed, and I'll have it up in mine as well. And uh, it's a great little thing. So you go, it's quite effective that. I, I really do like it. Um, it's one of those things that I'm seriously thinking about uh, producing. Uh, on Ultimate Modern Products for people as a custom item and you can have any logo printed on there that you want um, you supply the lights and I'll send you the box not sure whether to do it don't know if there'll be much call for it but if there is I'm more than happy to do it I think I might start in offering that as a service I'm not 100% sure just yet so that's it for all the FDM printing uh, I've then recently bought an Elegu Mars one of these and um, very really cheap for about 220 euros I think it was off of Amazon I thought I'll give resin a go and boy was I blown away with the quality of the resin stuff the first thing I printed was this little Colt 1911 and I'll just get you in a little bit closer and you can see the level of detail there is fantastic it's as good as any resin model that you can buy and you pay 20 quid for this it's solid as well it's very heavy um, but this is something I'm going to paint up in the very near future uh, just see if I can get you in, just so you can have a look at the detail on the knurling on the, you see that, and right there, absolutely fantastic level of detail, needs a little bit of cl uh, clean up here where the supports were, but that's going to come up really, really well, very nice indeed, and uh, I absolutely love this resin printer, um, but I just haven't had a lot of time to, to experiment with it at the moment. Uh, then uh, bought this little Chibu Deadpool, and as you can see, level of detail, fantastic, yes again. Um, and again, that would cost you 20 odd pounds to buy as a model, cost me less than a, about a quid to print, if that, you know. Um, we've then got one of our favourite characters, which is Master Chief. Uh, these were per these, these, the Master Chief was purchased from a site called Gambody.com, where you can buy these STLs. The STL cost about 20... $20 I think it was something like that uh, you can see the quality um, you know and this model would cost you 25 30 pounds easy to buy um, if you were just to buy it as a model and and it's another rail gun there as well and again you can see the quality I've seen you in a bit more uh, but these these models will cost you up to around about 40 pounds to buy as a completed resin model um, but you buy these once, you buy the STL once for about 20 bucks and you can print it as many times as you like. That's the thing with it. And this whole bust, this whole bust with his legs, his armor, his uh, stand, the lot. 
So you can see that the quality of these is absolutely fantastic and I love the fact that I can print them as many times as I like, which is the best part about resin printing. And so that is pretty much it um, until uh, uh, I decide to do what I do. But I think what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to do that, that and K's blaster. And those will be the first things on the list that you will see over the next uh, few weeks. Videos coming up of me painting and weathering them and making them look like that. So uh, that's, that's my bench at the moment. Let's go back to the forward facing camera. Well, there you go. That's what's on my bench at the moment. Um, as you can see here, these are the ones I'm going to be doing uh, first off, I think, uh, just to get a little feel for it. I really want to do Kay's Blaster as my first uh, project to paint and everything on camera and build from, from a print and paint and everything to, to finish product. Um, hope, what I'm hoping again is that I'm trying to marry the two, my two hobbies together, 3D printing and modeling. I think they go hand in hand. And with resin printers as cheap and as, and as advanced as they are now, uh, I don't think it's going to be too long before a lot of modelers are going to be adopting uh, 3D printing. Obviously, for the for these ones, it's a lot of work uh, for the FDM printing, but just because it's a simple fact it's squished plastic. Uh, but the resin-based, uh, there's such fine lines, such fine detail, it makes all the difference. It really does. Uh, I am very excited at the moment because in between me getting up, turning the cameras around and things like that, I had this little baby delivered. And I think anyone who knows anything knows what that is. That's my two mini Bruces. Um, so um, I can't wait to get those uh, up and running. I might even do a, a quick build vid if I can find the space to do it. I've just moved house recently and uh, I used to have a yeah, massive studio like this. Um, and I could do all my filming and everything there really nicely and easily. Uh, but now I've got this one little space here because the rest of the garage is taken up with printers and filament and things like that. So. Um, but uh, oh, I just rest my feet on that look. Oh yeah, I can't wait to get started. Uh, so I'm going to do a build video of these. Hopefully in the next two days that'll be released. Um, I can't believe I got these early before Christmas. I wasn't expecting them until mid January. I have to say, did order them on uh, on the day of of release. Um, and the thing that got me is obviously I've got uh, you know all these printers, 10, 12 printers, and they're all for work apart from the Ultimaker, which is my fun one. Uh, all the producers are workhorses. Um, uh, I own Ultimate Modeling Products, uh, umpretail.com. Do a lot of 3D modeling products on there that I sell um, and um, for, for modeling. Um, and uh, it's just to help our modeling life, things like that, it really does. It's just uh, problem solves that I've come up with, that the problems I've had for modeling. But these two, you, know, you get two for the price of one, basically. The, the print area, I don't need a big print area for my work stuff. Um, but you get two of these for the price of one Mark III. So uh, I can kind of, the, the hook line that got me was you can double your, your uptime, your print time and your, your products and things like that. So thanks Joseph, you got me there. Um, right, but uh, that's it. So that's my bench up, 3D bench update. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy watching this progress over the next few weeks. I will still be doing modeling stuff as well, uh, but I'll make sure it says in the title whether it's a 3D update or a, a modeling update or whatever. Um, uh, so there, so hope you enjoyed that. Feel free to like, share, comment, uh, whatever. Remember to press the little bell to get notifications of any new videos coming up. Um, but uh, for now, thank you very much. Take care, bye bye.